unlike Donald Trump, I don't believe people who disagree with me are the enemy. He wants to put them in jail. I'll give them a seat at the table. Vice President Kamala Harris has been rallying anti-Trump Republicans and independents to try to help propel her to the White House. She has campaigned with Republican Liz Cheney in key battleground states, and she's earned the endorsement of Dick Cheney, who was, of course, George W. Bush's vice president. George W. Bush's own daughter, Barbara Pierce Bush, is now endorsing the Harris Walls ticket after campaigning for her in Pennsylvania over the weekend. Bush telling People magazine, quote, I'm hopeful they'll move our country forward and protect women's rights. My next guest is the granddaughter of the famous Reverend Billy Graham, and she is also endorsing Kamala Harris. She writes this in a recent op-ed, quote, Trump's words and actions are fundamentally incompatible with evangelical principles, and goes on to say, for Harris, assuming the Oval Office isn't about prestige or avoiding criminal prosecution, it's an opportunity to serve. Trump, on the other hand, spews apocalyptic nonsense that serves only to demonize others and divide America. The author, Jerusha Dufour, joins me now. Uh, thank you so much uh, for being here. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us to explain your views. Uh, can I just start yeah. with, um, you know, I read the opinion piece you wrote uh, in Newsweek, and you use, you know, language, the language of Christianity, which you clearly speak very fluently and matters a lot to you, uh, to try to talk to these voters about why uh, you are opposing uh, former President Trump. And obviously, many of them are with Trump, if not most of them. Uh, what do you say to them now uh, here in the final week? You know, the fact, the reality that my opinion here is unique is shocking and heartbreaking, right? I mean, look at what happened on Sunday night. Um, we're talking about basic principles of our faith, kindness, um, gentleness, humility. These aren't, you know, theological things that I would have learned in Bible school. This is basic tenets of our faith. Um, and this president has shown since 2016 that he doesn't represent any of those things. So the fact that I even have to say these things is, um, is discouraging, to be honest with you. What do you hear from others uh, in in the community about uh, what they're wrestling with uh, this time around? Uh, where do you think and how do you think the Harris campaign uh, could find their best opportunity to talk to them? You know, I think that I'm not sure a lot of them are listening, to be honest with you. I think at this point, the people that I speak to talk about just a little bit of a tug in their spirit that, you know, the church leaders that I've been following for decades are telling me to vote for this man, but I'm reading scripture and I'm saying, this doesn't really line up. Can you speak to that? And so that's really what I'm speaking to. My vote for Kamala is really a vote against Donald Trump, a vote against another four years of Christians holding up a man as a representative of our faith that really doesn't show anything um, that represents our faith. So I think what the Harris campaign could do is honestly just keep doing what they're doing. Uh, can I ask you, I mean, you, you mentioned your vote is one that's really against Donald Trump, and obviously abortion has been front and center in yeah. this campaign. Uh, yeah. The fall of, of Roe versus Wade is something that a lot of evangelical voters uh, had hoped, had prayed for. Uh, how do you square uh, what your beliefs may be, what are your beliefs on that with your vote here? Sure, absolutely. I think what I would ask a lot of people to do is ask what pro-life means to them, right? What is the definition of pro-life for them? Um, for me, pro-life is, you know, womb to grave. So to support a baby in the womb, but also support um, people being labeled as human garbage um, doesn't really seem to line up for me, right? And so can we support life all the way through life? Um, also the statistics. I ask people to look at the statistics and see that um, about 8% abortions went up about 8% on, under Donald Trump. Um, so I'm not really sure either party is pro-life. I try to look at which one is more pro-family and I think that's more Kamala Harris's uh, administration. Really fascinating perspective. Uh, Drusha DeFord, I'm so grateful to have you on the show. Thank you very much for being here. Donald Trump appears to be laying the groundwork to challenge the election result if he loses next week. While Kamala Harris spoke to supporters in the nation's capital last night, Trump was in battleground Pennsylvania, where he claimed that the Keystone State is already the site of voter fraud.
If you have a mail-in ballot, get that damn ballot in, please, immediately, because... Because they've already started cheating in Lancaster. They've cheated. We caught them with 2,600 votes. No, we caught them cold. 2,600. And every vote was written by the same person. <laughs> I wonder how that happened. It must be a coincidence. It must be a coincidence. Last week, officials in that state did announce that they suspected incidents of voter registration fraud. That investigation is still ongoing. CNN reporting that state and county officials are looking to reassure voters and protect the integrity of the election process. Pennsylvania's Democratic governor, Josh Shapiro, pushed back on Trump's claims, recalling the former president and his allies' legal challenges to the 2020 election vote count. I understand that Donald Trump wants to again uh, you know, use the same playbook where he tries to you know, create chaos and stoke division and fear about our system. But again, we will have a free and fair, safe and secure election in Pennsylvania, and the will of the people will be respected and protected. All right, joining us now, Washington Post national political reporter Sabrina Rodriguez. Sabrina, uh, good morning to you. Uh, so you were at Trump's rally uh, in Pennsylvania yesterday. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about what you saw on the ground, what that crowd was like uh, and there were, was a lot of discussion about what might happen around outside it, um, Allentown, a, ma a majority Latino city now. It just, it, what did you see? Well, Casey, it was it was sort of what we were expecting. Of you know, we knew there would be some type of protest presence outside of it. You know, out of an abundance of caution, the mayor of Allentown, you know, and and the school district decided to cancel school. Um, so so there was some concerns about what exactly could transpire, just given that in this majority Latino city where there are thousands of Puerto Ricans, there could be some type of you know tension coming to head um it was peaceful protests i mean it was dozens of pro protesters mostly puerto rican um that were you know coming out and, and denouncing donald trump you know there was a lot of signs and puerto rican flags people yelling donald trump fuera uh, signs that were saying you know that the garbage will be taken out on november 5th um, and criticism of trump and his supporters um but but really i mean what you saw as well was there were some Puerto Ricans from Allentown that were in the crowd. Um, you know, I talked to several who were offended by the joke. Uh, there was one man I met that was notable because he has a big Puerto Rican flag on his arm, talked about how much he loves his island. But at the end of the day, he was focused on, you know, the issues that he thought that Donald Trump uh, um, could address on the economy, on an immigration. So we really saw the, the Trump campaign really lean in to this situation and make all the opening speakers, you know, Latinos speaking, peppering their speeches in Spanish and, you know, talking about their support for, for Puerto Ricans and for Latinos that they see from Donald Trump. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you that, Sabrina. I know you've covered a number of, of Trump rallies, including in some places where Spanish is relatively widely spoken, like, say, you know, Arizona or any a, a number of other places where such speakers might uh, have been welcomed. Have you seen them do this before or did you get the sense that this was specifically because of what happened on stage at Madison Square Garden? Yeah, this is, was a completely unprecedented, unique situation. I mean, regardless of where Donald Trump does his rallies, even if it's in states or cities that have a significant Latino population, by and large, his speakers are white um, and, and do not speak Spanish at his rallies. So this was a very clear message. I mean, from the beginning of, from the top of, you know, the rally and, and every speaker um, brought this up. Nobody directly mentioned the island of garbage comment that the comedian made at Trump's rally in Madison Square Garden on Sunday. But again, it was in the ether and it was in, you know, the environment as people repeatedly brought up that Donald Trump was a friend of the Puerto Rican people, that Donald Trump was a friend to Latinos, um, to, to hearing, you know, Senator Marco Rubio, who has not been very active on the campaign trail for Trump, to hear, you know, Marco Rubio come up on stage and, and uh, you know, offer his support for Donald Trump, make his pitch for Trump, and then also even switch to Spanish and say, you know, he wanted to make sure that there was a message for Spanish language media. That does not typically happen at a Trump rally. Very interesting. All right, Sabrina Rodriguez for us. Uh, Sabrina, always grateful to have you on the show. Thank you so much.